The most exciting game in London is playing out here in Les Ambassadors. It's a 48 hour countdown as the best in the business play it out to be the king of the party poker, big game. This is a cash game like no other. Money bonuses, evictions and top poker talent tested to their limits. Tonight, another player will be voted off and the competition is fierce. So far we've seen huge pots, big bluffs, great action and there's plenty more to come. They've risen and fallen in rapid succession here at Les Ambassadors Casino in the heart of London's West End. Over 30 hours of action under their belt as the clock moves relentlessly towards its 40 hour mark and the end of this marathon contest. There's been little respite at this table, which has seen a host of stars from the screen to the internet pass through. Only one has stood the test of time. With a remarkable performance, can he continue to do so? The leaderboard tells its own tale. Neil Channing, a stalwart of the game, attempted to outlast them all. A player eviction denied him the chance. No sooner had he gone than he was back and now leads the way. Robert Williamson III also suffered the indignity of a player eviction, but came back a stronger player and is hot on Channing's tail. Viffer is the ever-present player. His shifting stack tells the tale of the whole game. At the moment, he's looking good. Luke Schwartz, on the other hand, has been battered at this table. Nearly 30K down, he's decided to call time on the big game, leaving an empty seat, which brings a smile to the ever-expanding queue of players waiting for their chance at the big game. As we say goodbye to Luke Schwartz, we welcome Paul Simler. The Marbella kid has proved himself the ultimate endurance player when it comes to poker, clocking up nearly 80 hours. Plan today is to sit with 10,000, uh, see how it goes, and hopefully build that up to about 30,000. Me, I'm boring. I just sit there, don't talk. Uh, <laughs> I like to have fun at the table, so uh, I'm here to have fun and uh, let's see what happens. They call him the Marbella kid, Paul Zimbler. Coming in for 10,000 pounds. And okay, he has been waiting to get in this game since kickoff. Seeing him lurking in the shadows. Uh, he just won um, over in Ireland last week. He won the sort of the main Omaha event over there. He's a he's a guy, what he's, what he's uh, sort of mostly known for, Dusty. I don't know if you've seen Paul Zimbler before, but he in the World Series of Poker Europe time last year, he uh, tried to set uh, the world record for endurance poker playing. Um, was, it, was it 80 hours or 90? It was something like 80 or 90 hours. Um, yeah, he did it over at the Empire Casino here in London. Now, the slight caveat to that, he was playing a bunch of heads up sit and goes for the whole time for charity. Um, he did it. The the slight caveat to that is that uh, all the matches, heads up matches he played over the 80 hours, were were for charity and not for real money. So, um, towards the end of it, he he forgot the rules to poker and actually did not know where he was. I, I had the opportunity to talk to him, or. I was talking to someone <laughs> that purported to be him over those last couple hours. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was an impressive feat, and he raised a lot of money for charity. To say it's as impressive as what Channing and Viffer are doing, though, in my mind, it wasn't, because uh, here these guys are with 60,000 pounds in real money on the table uh, after 40, uh, 36 hours. But, yeah, there's uh, no question what they're doing is, you know, pretty uh, pretty special. It's impressive Gosh. to me. Yeah. Ella's still having fun. Viffer, I try not to help you all night long. You're my man.
Oh, how long did you play for? 78. Yeah, about it. I mean, you were in a I stacked loop. That's what actually you know, the there's Justin Bonomo leaning against a rail. Give me a seat. <coughs> Wonder whose stack he's eye eyeing hungrily. There's still a bunch of his money on this table. This might be uh, Andrew Ruiz's moment here. Well, he's just called, hasn't he? Pre-flop. And Williamson re-raise, and I think Williamson's going to be committed uh, at this point due to Andre Stack. Come on, Andres! <coughs> Come on, Andres! In English. <laughs> Fifra, I'd actually like, you know, normally he always gets involved in these hands, but I don't mind seeing him fold just because is it the time? Andres is in the pot. Vamos! It looks a little time. suspicious. There, oh, God. <laughs> Still got 1,900 pounds. There, Just, there, oh, God. Still got 1,900 pounds back. So he just calls. I thought he would have just gone ahead and pushed all the money in there at that point. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, he still has... Uh, still has the best hand with ace high there, but... Uh, I could definitely see him getting outplayed, unfortunately, here. <laughs> He's going to have to commit the rest of his money with ace high, which he may well do. Well, he, he really has to, doesn't he? I mean. It would be hard for him to to uh, to fold. He's getting a darn good price. Channing so. Okay. Is that right? And that, that, that's a raise, and. It's, um, you know, the two guys behind him, well, really, you know, I mean, Ruiz doesn't have much, but, oh, no, Andres. Yeah, Andres is kicking himself for not just putting the money in uh, pre-flop. I suppose if uh, Differ calls, maybe he's kind of defined his hand a little bit as some kind of draw that's got some odds that he can't pass up. Wow. That's a cold, cold card. Channing I think Channing's got a couple options. He can make a small bet and fold, or, or he can just uh, check behind and keep the pot smaller. Get out of here. Should have bet the turn. What did he show Emil? Did show Emil? And for Viffer, look at his stack size. Six figures, first man to... Welcome back to the big game here at Les Ambassadors Casino. Nearly 35 hours played in this 48-hour cash game. No one beating Viffer out of his money at this stage. He's head and shoulders above anyone at the moment. Channing, his latest victim, everybody going well, just Zimbler and Ruiz in the red, but by the smallest right. of margins. Let's start at the beginning of the hands. <laughs> I should just bet the flop and then lose the you, you know this big game still got life in it. Yeah, just needs to... Yeah. yeah, we just need to get uh, one more action player. Maybe Tony G will come riding up on his bicycle again. So back from floating in on his feet, back from his ballroom dancing lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so Viffer picks up a real hand here. Oh. Like he said, he doesn't even know what to do when he actually gets a hand. He's like, how do I play these? He knows how to play jack high. Rubenate are interested enough. Yeah, Ruben's not going to lie down. He's unfortunately out of position here. Viffer's got the button. Wow. This could be a very good spot. And there will be blood. <laughs> Viffer made a good check there. I knew he couldn't extract value out of much and chose to keep the pot small. He's kind of playing the hand way ahead or way behind. And, and, and now we'll be happy to call two barrels? Yeah, he'll absolutely call both, uh, both streets here. 
But I, it, it looks like he set himself up to get away with the minimum. Well, there's 7,600 here, so it's just going to be nearly impossible for Vitford to do anything but call. It's just a question of how much Ruben wants to bet. And if the river was something like a nine of clubs, he possibly could have considered folding the river, but probably not. But uh, with that five, there's just absolutely no way he's going to fold the river. Ruben's definitely capable of value betting a jack. He's capable of running a bluff here. Biffer's not thrilled about it, but he knows he has to call. It is five grand. And he's having a good look at Alice. I think all the logic is for a call, but he just didn't like what he saw when he looked at Ellis. Here comes the queen. <laughs> well, he kept it to a minimum. You know, if Vifford bet the flop, yeah. got check raised there. It may have been a while before he finally gave him credit for a queen, and if that, you know, might have ended up costing him all his chips at some point. Yeah. So yeah. time, time or at least he would doubled up uh, the Rubinator. <laughs> After another exhausting session here at Les Ambassadors, it's time for player eviction. Players exempt this time are Rui and Zimler. And of course, our most aggressive player once again, Mr. Wiffer. I can't help it, I didn't even try. I tried to play like a nit. You guys must be full people to choose from. Please cast your votes now. And I actually won money. Andreas, we know you're safe. Pirates Robert, are you're you? also safe. What? Oh, as much as you try. Even though you knew. How are you? Ruben? It might be you. <laughs> Guy Steel? Could be you. It might be you. Biffa, we know you're safe. Neil Channing. Slide. It might be you. Oh, oh, wait, did you say already two on what We know Paul is safe. Paul Sembler's safe. Phil? Black. Bill, goodbye. You also say. Yes! I love you That's people. That's what happens when you have I love money. America. <laughs> so from Guy, Channing, and Ruben. So the player leaving now is Guy. I mean. And for Guy Steele. Nerves of steel, patience of steel, and now the steel door will shut behind him. So a good standard, but I, you know it's difficult to play with a short stack. If I'd have sat down with maybe twenty or thirty thousand, I could be more aggressive. But I didn't get any cards. I think Jacks was probably the best hand I had. So. But I'm uh, pleased to come away unscathed, so to speak. <laughs> Biffer still the man to catch, but Robert Williamson the third and Ellis Rubin hot on his heels. Neil Channing taking a few steps back, but a spare seat at our table with the exit of Guy Steele, who walks away with a profit just about. Another player to rejoin the table is Isaac Haxton. Well, I didn't get a whole lot of opportunities to really play any interesting pots in the first few hours I was in the game. I'm hoping just to pick up some more hands and get involved in some big pots. Hopefully it'll go well today. Yeah, it could be a very green day with Isaac Haxton. And for poker How's it purist, going, Dusty, uh, yes, uh, great to I'm see here. Isaac Haxton back at the table, as you He's said, and it's true. Well, he is one of the most up? proficient players I of this form of poker. Well, Isaac seems to have gotten him some sausage sandwiches anyway. He's enjoying London. One of the most important uh, 
cultural experiences you'll have over here. <laughs> Actually, uh, Isaac was over it was a couple months ago uh, doing commentary for this, this Dirt well, Challenge, and uh, he went to his first, first uh, English uh, soccer game, football game, as they call it over here. He didn't realize it was outdoors. <laughs> he didn't have a coat. <laughs> he was, yeah, I was so sitting with him. It's freezing cold. <laughs> I thought he thought it was played like basketball inside or something. Looks like Grooving with the uh, cut off open. I don't think Isaac's going to. Uh, let him get away with it. So he just calls. Right. And he calls in a spot like that, you know, Luke would have re-raised to isolate and so maybe would have rolled. I mean, I, I, I don't know. This is more of a of a Neil Channing type call behind to let people in and see the flop. And, or, or, or is it just he doesn't, not really so sure of the table dynamics? Because look what's happened here. That's one thing Phil isn't afraid to do is, you know, put people to the test here and just... Make a raise out of nowhere and be like, hey, you better have a hand. Notice Neil in a lot of those situations, but uh, he hasn't pulled the trigger on that. Not his style. Jeez. <laughs> and Tom Haxton in the game. Hello. And you can buckle up. We got some poker on tap here. And there's a classic example of an internet player understanding the odds. He knows. A hand like A7 suited is going to have 30% equity against even a hand as strong as King King and Ace King, and you know he really can never get the money in too awful bad here. You know he knows Locke's range is really wide, and this is just a great play. And uh, obviously Phil has no play with the fold; he's going to Hollywood it a little bit. You have pair of sixes, huh? He pulled the trigger. <laughs> Shoots from the hip, Isaac Haxton, and you know, he looks like a little milky toe scientist, but uh, he is one, he, he's aggressive, he's good, he's sharp. You gotta watch these young, fresh people ace. coming in. We were, uh, <laughs> we let you get away with a lot of that stuff. <laughs> I was, I didn't care, I was, I was bluffing the turn if I missed. Just in case you missed. <laughs> so that's just yeah. the type of flop Fire. there where Locke is just. Which might be a mistake. No matter what hand, even against uh, pocket queens, he's going to have lots of outs, and uh, he's just never going to fold. Oh, that was and uh, nice. under the heading of must be nice, ooh, must be something. What do you think Haxton will do here? It's, uh, to the re-raise. Well, it's funny because Isaac is probably not aware that Viffer slowed down quite a bit. Uh, last Good time call. Isaac played with him, he's uh, he was pretty insanely aggressive. So, right. This is the type of hand he doesn't want to play out of position against Viffer. Uh, so he's probably going to be looking to, you know, repop the uh, preflop a lot. Although he might he might surprise me and just toss in a call here. And and Isaac stack is only twenty six thousand. I say only. I mean it's, you know, about a quarter of Viffer's. So he doesn't mind so much playing for stacks because he knows that. In his mind, Viffer could have just just so much. Yeah, so Isaac did re-raise. And I, I kind of presume that he would not want to play the pot out of position and just really want to, you know, just, just be willing to get all the money and if need be and, you know, either flip a coin with them or if he happens to run, in or to run, to, run into aces, then it's just the way it goes sometimes. second I turned the volume up, she woke up. So sick. Wow. Yeah, he did make the re-raise small enough to make calling a reasonable play. And, and, and also, I mean, there's, there's something about Isaac's stack size. I was thinking if I make it like anything, you know, the, the re-raise, it's actually playing for Haxton's whole stack in a sense. Viffer probably, I mean, he'll at least call and maybe just ship all in. And uh, Isaac will be forced to, to fold. No, Isaac's got 15 back, so really it's, it's getting to be about time for the chef. Right, because Haxton's four betting range against a guy like Viffer can be really strong. All All Fuck, in. I call. call. Yeah, and 
Doesn't have to worry. He made the right, right play, back. Viffer did. Sharp. Running it twice. This is probably in the neighborhood of one of the five or six biggest pots we've we've seen yeah. in the whole of the big game. Oh, we we kind of had a little twice. interim stuff oh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> before they got all the chips in, but the money was going in with that hand. Oh, I success. I run it twice. Wow. It just assumed just, just assume take a new flip on the whole cards as well. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Viffer wins the first. That's gay yeah, at five now. Viffer is winning. Pacer King. Viffer wow. wins the right. second. Like wow, big big pot there. <laughs> and like you you kind of know the story, leather ass. A lot of your blogs and philosophies are about sort of this is poker. Haxton, one of the best players in the world, comes into one of the best games he's ever been in, plays perfect poker. Yeah, he's stuck. He's buried. Yeah. <laughs> he's, That's the way it goes. He's, he's, he's down 20,000 pounds in the space of 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. This is, uh, that's the that's game. Poker. That's the life you've chosen. Almost nothing. Oh, be careful, everyone, now. Welcome to London, and welcome to the big game. Viffer still the man to catch, but Robert Williams in the third, and Ellis Rubin hot on his heels. All in. All in. Well, you want to go home? How much is that? 1450. Okay, now I'll look at my cards. I, I'm just starting to think as we're talking well, about right Williamson that maybe well, something's going right. on which we haven't clocked in on because he's got happy. the dark glasses and he's so well dressed and small, baby. Just a, maybe he's starting to feel the, the, the effects of the fatigue and the long hours. I hate folding this card for our Well, blow the trumpets because Andres Ruiz has gotten all his money in. There we go. All right. Can you take a hundred to pull through a pile, put it in the middle, and then tell me what he's got left? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Phil, really. I mean, it'd be sort of un. Have some heart, Phil. Have some sympathy. Four, it's 1575 1350 Hey, you got to call there. I don't know. I kind of think Ruiz has waited so long. I wouldn't really be crazy about the sevens right now. That's me, though. Or can you not ignore the math? No, it's a little bit of a loose call, I think, by, you know, Ruiz has clearly played... Uh, not overly aggressive by any means. So, um, I'd put him on, at best, you're flipping a coin there, and I, I think Locke can make a fold there. Well, you, say, you say at best you're flipping a coin, right? But, I mean, if you if you take all the hands in Ruiz's range right now, uh, there's so many more pairs than unpaired hands, I, I think. I don't know. More than half. Exactly. I, 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 I know there's four times as many in the unpaired sort of, or whatever they call it, but... All right, let's see an ace or a queen. Nothing against Phil here, but... Oh, that's too bad. And that's well. Finito for Andres Ruiz. He did manage to get the money in in a spot where the, the, the double up would have given him some working room. As Rocky would say, hey, Adrian, where's Adrian? <laughs> Andres Ruiz just not getting the breaks in this big game and decides to call time on his efforts in the big game. Channing, Locke, Williamson the third, and Ruben all battling away, but it's Viffer who has really started to flex his muscle and heads our leaderboard to the moment. Where's the rest of the action yeah. come from? Hey, uh... <laughs> He doesn't play any hands anyway. Ah. That's what I said. Where's the rest He's of the action? He's been gone mighty long. 
Call. Called. So Williamson, we've seen this a few times before. He just limps in with a pretty darn big hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get start some fireworks here. Must be is nice. Is this only Haxton's third time with the Ace King since he sat back See, down? He did a very good move there. I'm just going to let you know he's done a good move. The small blind. He's taking the small blind. Well, well, locks <laughs> in, and there's a very, very legitimate um, squeeze play avenue here, right? Thinking, you know. Haxton should be loose, isolating from Button, and Lack should doesn't have to be that strong to call. A little too good of a flop for Haxton here. He'd like something like an ace two two or something, but I'm sure uh, he'll take uh, this Why flop too. Uh, like he's complaining. With like garbage cards, just to look to try and connect. Yeah, man. <laughs> Gosh, I was I squeeze said Williamson that I could represent the king. It looks like he might have some bad timing here. What's Haxton going to do here with a hand like, uh, you know, ace queen himself or ace jack or uh, pocket nines, hands like that? Right. You know, and he can also have a lot of air. It's a good flop for uh, Haxton to just continuation bet into two people uh, with a hand like a, you know, six, seven of clubs or something. So uh, I, I don't mind this play by Williamson here. We can obviously know, we obviously know he's, Picked uh, an unfortunate time to do it, but uh, it's uh, it's certainly a worthy play. Also, you never know. Sometimes a hand like this just looks like, you know, I don't think you have a hand. I'm just going to make a little re-raise back, and what are you going to do? And Haxton's capable of that, too. And sometimes guys will just ship a hand like ace-queen and, you know, know that Haxton, you know, is going to have air a lot. No, I bet 11, and you raised to 32. Okay, thank you. Fault. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me when I thought that I just bet 3,200. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't mind being tired and, and, and fading that. I just, you know, I was that blind and I did something that bad. After the departure of our Poker News qualifier, we are welcoming a new player at the table. It's Justin Bonomo. He suffered a few heavy losses first time around, but that hasn't dampened his enthusiasm for this game rested and ready to redeem himself. I'm definitely gonna come out with my regular game today. I play a lot of cash games online, so I'm not gonna feel nervous around the other players. Uh, there's definitely a lot of adjusting, like you don't know if I'm gonna see crazy Viffer or regular Viffer, or who's gonna be loose and who's gonna be not. So I'm just gonna kinda sit down, play my game, and see who's playing what. Justin Bonomo, how different does he look uh, than the man who trudged away 30,000 pounds down Oh, about 24 hours ago. And uh, he'll look across the table and think, Viffer, weren't you sitting in that same seat when I left? And <laughs> Neil, have you, ha, do you have three of those black belt uh, karate outfits? Because <laughs> I've had a shower, a new shirt, I've reloaded, and uh, Justin Bonomo feeling ready for today. Now, interestingly Thanks, enough, Lord. Dusty, is Lord. that um, What's your name? I, I just sort of to know. the last about 20,000 pounds that Justin me. lost uh, when he left uh, all went to Neil in a in a pot that uh, probably will, 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 will feel like didn't have to happen. Um, and uh, I bet he's back for a bit of revenge here. He's up to <laughs> There's this... Uh, And I'm sure it happens online in in, in, in in the same fashion. But years ago, when I used to live in Las Vegas, you know that in the poker room at the at the Mirage, they had the the graveyard shift, the evening shift, the day shift. Not just for the casino workers, but for the poker players. And any time they'd overlap, um, you'd know you're in a good spot. And I'm sure you have the same thing in your on the internet. You know, you see some guys, you know they're evening players, and you see them on your day shift, and you know they've been there too long. Yeah, exactly. And um, right now, Bottomo and Haxton are coming in on the day shift and seeing the graveyard, stuck graveyard players right now. It's a good feeling. I mean, it's a really good feeling. Oh, yeah, and we're going to see a lot of people. Everybody here has some opportunity for a very big hand or already has a pretty big hand. Uh, so, if nobody puts in a raise here, we might see the entire uh, group go to the turn.
Williamson's deciding if he wants to just put in a raise right now and try and shut some of the guys out of the pot, or if he should kind of just take a little more cautious approach. Yeah, you like the cautious approach here? Because Typically of the guys behind him? Yeah, I mean, the flop is pretty dry, but took them down with me. you really hate uh, <laughs> putting yourself in a six spot. Everybody too. got a six? Jeez. Okay. Well, that's a nice little. Imagine we card might, uh, yeah, we might see Haxton uh, go nuts here. Six. I'm not too humble. Wow. So, Just the nuts. Haxton makes the nuts, and I suppose Williamson will probably have to pay off the river bet. A check. I don't think so. It's 47.50 in this pot. Th there's been. Not much indication that a king's out there. I'm really surprised Haxton didn't lead the turn. Since he picked up such a massive amount of uh, equity in the pot. Uh, but he took the more cautious route, spiked his hand that way. and um, Crying call time. Yeah, I think it's crying call time from what? Call. He call. hates his hand right now. Yeah, it's, a, it's it's only a bluff, but he has really underrepresented top pair right now, hasn't he? I mean, he has now lost about 15,000 uh, pounds. A couple hands, he was might have been bit critical. This was just a bit of a cooler, in a sense. Um, now he's not happy with it. I played my hand bad. Thank God. Really? You had the second nuts and didn't raise? <laughs> I feel robbed. Second nuts, well. <laughs> he showed him the king of hearts. About, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Looking at the stacks, Dusty, the guys at the table. Big spread here. Yeah, huge spread. We've got Viffer with the huge stack. We've got Ellis with a, uh, a much smaller stack, but still a really big stack for this game, and as well as Phil Locke, who's up a little bit. Uh, but Justin Bonomo still stuck, and Isaac after that uh, beat to... Uh, to Viffer a few hands back, still stuck as well. And now that uh, sort of Bonomo and Haxton with their big tugs, tanks of money have re replaced the short stacks, there's a lot more money on this table. Little min raise there from Ruben. Wow. I think that Ellis calls so liberally to uh, re raises that he just wants to make the pot as big as possible. With his big hand. Well, Bonomo makes it look easy getting away from the ace queen. And you're so right. Mm -hmm. Channing's gotten head up against Reuben, and you know he's gotten Reuben putting in 1,300 pounds here with the queen jack. Yeah, it was a great fold by uh, Justin Bonomo there, getting away from his ace queen. A lot of guys could have overplayed that hand in that spot. I don't suspect Reuben's going anywhere on this flop. I think that uh, gut shot to the nuts there is going to be a little too enticing for him to just fold straight away. You are so right. It, and we're, we're at the point right now where, you know, getting the aces cracked for Channing is going to be a pretty fragile experience. So uh, the 10 looms large. Interesting to see if uh, Ruben has any plan for trying to take this away. And it looks like... Uh, well, we've just seen s so often, haven't we? Either he... Either he checks the flop or checks the turn in these kind of spots. It's like, I don't know, it's like guaranteeing two streets of value. I, I, I mean, <coughs> it is, but then, you know, when he starts betting the turn, then we always know it's a bluff or a, uh, or the mortal nuts. You know, it doesn't do a whole lot for him sort of, uh, you know, his play can become a little transparent if he uh, keeps that up. Big bet from Ruben. It's a big bet, a big bluff. And Channing, Channing raised it? Jeez, that's some. Um. 
Pinky's hoping uh, Ruben has a king and just gets confused and calls. Well, yeah, would Ruben have bet that much with a king? Channing thinks so. Either way, he's done it. Uh, he must have caught a glimpse in the glass. Sure. He's he's gotten. He's he's maxed out there. I actually had a real hand that time. Surprisingly, I know you don't believe me. But anyway. I'd like to now announce the poker news pot. Well, it's a poker news pot. This should enliven the spirits of these eight players. The way they go at these pots, you'd think they're putting a million in. <laughs> yeah, a thousand pounds, which is still pretty significant. And uh, these guys said it's going to be interesting to watch this thing. What do they do? They add, they add a thousand to this pot. Yeah. Is that what they do? Adding a thousand. It's Paul Zimbler's first. It's his first ever poker news pot. The man's of Weirgen. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he is too, because he's he's having all those thoughts. The guy, everyone has their first time. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in there and steal this pot, and they're not gonna realize that there's a thousand pounds extra in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Trust me, not in a million years, but he just raised to 150, and everyone will fold. <laughs> This will be played to the death. <laughs> Locks called, Bonomo's called, and I think Ellis. I think I think we're we're about eleven seconds away from the lock open shove. Let's let's see. God, Isaac, he's a tiger. He's a little suspicious here. Don't do it, Isaac. Don't do it, Isaac. You might just be sick enough to make it about 6K. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a guy I know who has it in him. We'll see if he does, though. You guys are so sick. I mean, it's not like your life goes with it. I mean, you, you take that thousand pounds out of the pot. Biffer calls here. I mean, he's done it for 30 hours. You put the poker news pot in, and, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're smart. I'm not smart enough to figure out that's going to be raised after me. Uh oh, uh oh. Well, if Ruben wants this bad, this could spell trouble. If um, I call, no oh gosh, drawing dead. Yeah, and you know, if a weird kind of thing happened there. Uh, Ruben made sort of an ambitious oh, um, raise from the small blind. Had he not, Haxton gets involved with the Jack King, and Biffer might stack him. I never felt yeah, that could have been really hairy. <laughs> Craig, yeah, this is just unfortunate. Grand, a little bit of meltdown for Ruben. Not a not a f not well a fact done. lost on Isaac. Jack, see what comes on the river. Oh, look, moved yeah, but I have two. Uh, I got have. I got a little Greener. extra. I got a little extra. Isaac, probably, what was it? Would he lost the full 30,000 pounds that he has in front of him? Would he have? In case I fall asleep and can't have the drinks with you. Might have. He might have. Oh, yeah. Th they, there would have been no stopping those guys. Nobody would ever get away from that hand in that spot. Viffer in the thick of it once again, winning or losing. He's always there. Axton looking at home and standing up to the most aggressive man at the table, but all of it could be taking its toll on Viffer. Viffer nearly hitting the heady heights of 100K profit in the big game four. It's been aggressive play all the way, and so far it's paid off. Justin Bonomo just can't get himself off the bottom of the pile. As for the rest, 
Channing, Williamson the third, and Locke all doing well. Haxon and Rubin struggling. I mean, so Viffer's just completely obliterating this table. It wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that he winds up with every chip on this table no, by the end the way he's going. Ev every chip and uh, and uh, half the cocktail waitress's uh, phone numbers. Yeah. Um, he is having a stormer. Sounds like being Viffer's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's now, he's now cooler at Haxton once and Ellis once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he got that one really sick beat with the one outer, but Viffer cannot complain with some of the situations he's been dealt. He's gotten some extremely good situations and some big pots, and overall I think he's run extraordinarily well. Yeah, you know, it's, it's good you mentioned that. What has Viffer got to moan about anyway? One outer. We've all been one outered. He's up, <laughs> he's up more money than <laughs> everybody else in these games combined. So uh, it's just been a dominating performance. For the race, 1875. Right, and even though Ellis has got a big hand and has made a big raise, they just saw him do it with a six. Any of those 5,000? They just saw him do it with a six, and and uh, this would be a great spot for Ellis if. Oh, how'd you get out of it, Isaac? What happened? Did he ask a question he knew the answer in to see how Ellis would handle the chips? Is he that clever? It's possible. I wouldn't put it past him. Well, let that be a lesson to the Seems rest. To have of the you. algorithm for just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> let that be a lesson to the rest of you. How could he not know if there was any 5,000 chips there? He was just sitting there when uh, when Ellis topped up not not four minutes ago. He knows how many yeah, he knows chips exactly. Ellis has. So Locke puts in kind of a curious call here. King Deuce of Hearts. He knew. Check. Interesting to see how Phil plays this. Oh, gosh, you're right, because uh, Ru Ruben made this, what, like 1,300 before the flop, right? Yeah, almost 2,000. Yeah, ruben has got to be feeling pretty good about his hand. Locke might toss in a call here, maybe putting him on a king-queen or ace-queen or Bet some type of uh, bluff that he thinks he can catch here with a deuce. You also know that Ruben's probably a little heated right now. Yeah, you'd have to know that. And if Locke doesn't catch, there's a couple cards that can slow the action down. Really shouldn't be one of them, should it? No, it shouldn't. I mean, if anything, that'll make Locke uh, feel even better about his hand. You know, it looks just like a pair of deuces. Check. 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 Yeah, I presume <coughs> Locke would check. I think Ruben missed a lot of value there. Yeah. He had a chance of getting called. I'm not sure what he was afraid of. I guess, I suppose he may have been trying to hope Locke would just bluff some missed draws. I would have paid 10. Probably figured he could get more value by bluff catching missed draws than he could by value betting the river. That's a good thing. It was way over the number of players in the game, I think. I don't know the total number of players, but. Hey, Shaq, no good. Roland Wolf did it. Had that wrong. Ellis Rubin has rebought for the first time only in the last 25 minutes. He's all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, he's stuck about 15 grand. And that's from a high of. 28, 29,000 pounds profit. Yeah, he's been on a bit of a downswing. It's 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 tougher for him because uh, just with the lineup of the table, they're kind of isolating him a little bit. Very tough to play these pots from isolation, and we're not making hands and flops. 
When I go to the table, I just no five and I wish I could be in there. Everybody pack up, picking me off. Robert's leaving, game's over. Okay. No point in playing anymore. I'm done. <laughs> he's up. If y'all quit, I swear he's, to God, he's if got, this happens to me, I get so tortured. At least give me one hour to get out of the room. You know, 30 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> he's been some of the lifeblood <laughs> of. I don't know if you've seen how I walk out of the room. Like, I'm not in good shape anymore. Of this big game. Have you talked about playing and playing pleasure, for days and days? Though. Always a pleasure. It was a fantastic bunch of players, bunch of vultures. They did their job. They picked me apart. They want some of their money back. I still left with theirs. The vultures have had their say around this table. Viffer, unsurprisingly the biggest of the lot and looking to get bigger. He's now past the runners and riders who started the big game. Tilly, Tony G, Trickett, Grandine, and Bodo have all been and gone with plenty in their pockets. Channing's still there and fighting for his share and about to be joined by the familiar face of Barney Boatman, a veteran of the big game with a score to settle. I've got not exactly something to prove, but I've got something to retrieve today. Next time, our players are pushed to their limits. They all need to stay focused as another eviction takes place and they all want to take home bundles of cash here at the Party Poker Big Game. Will Boatman get to retrieve that lost moment from murky past of the big game, or will this table claim another victim? The clock ticks down, the money ebbs and flows, the poker just gets better and better, with more to come in the Party Poker Big Game 4.